Let's take a look at how to use the Amazon Flex driver app step by step. In this video, I'm gonna do a tutorial of how to use all of the features in this app. Then we're gonna do a quick ride along as I make some deliveries, and I'll run into a couple of issues out there on the road. So make sure you stick around and find out how I resolve these issues. I'll also do a little bit of troubleshooting at the end of the video and show you guys how to work through some common issues that you might encounter while you're out there delivering packages. So make sure you stick around for this entire video and catch all of the info that it has to offer. All right, let's go ahead and dive into that app. From the home screen, we can hit upcoming offers or hit the menu at the top left hand corner and scroll down to offers to see the available blocks. The blocks currently listed are all distribution center delivery blocks where I'll pick up packages from one of the local distribution centers and deliver them to Amazon customers. Pricing fluctuates by demand and tends to go up as the delivery times near. As you can see, a single fresh block has popped up. These blocks include grocery deliveries from a local Whole Foods, and I can get tipped on these blocks, which makes them a little bit more attractive, and that means they usually disappear faster. I can update my availability by clicking in the main menu and going to calendar. I'll then click setup availability at the bottom of the screen. I can click on any given day and then update the hours that I now want to receive updates of available blocks in the app. When I'm happy with my schedule, I can click set availability and then done. This will take me back to the calendar. Now let's look at how to drop a block that was previously picked up. I'll click on the date that has an orange dot and this will take me to my scheduled block. I'll then tap on the block and hit forfeit this time at the bottom of the screen. As long as I forfeit the block 45 minutes or more before the start time, I won't be penalized. Forfeiting blocks within that 45 minute window is potentially a reason to get deactivated. Now that I've dropped the block, my calendar is empty. Let's head over to earnings and take a look at some recent payouts. The bulk of my payouts are for blocks and instant offers. I'll receive tips on blocks, but instant offers, as well as Prime Now blocks, Amazon Fresh blocks, and Amazon Restaurant blocks, which recently were discontinued, allow for tipping in the app. Taking a closer look at an instant offer payout, I was paid $20 and tips were included. There's no breakdown of base pay and tip amount in the app, just one number with everything included. Payouts are made twice a week marked as deposits in the earnings section. If you need to rewatch any of the training videos, you can easily find them under the main menu. If you need to contact support outside of a delivery time, then you can do so in the main menu under the help section. There's a guide with helpful answers, and if you can't find what you're looking for, you can go ahead and email support. In my experience, phone support during deliveries has been much more helpful than email support outside of delivery times. Let's take a look at what it looks like to pick up a block in the app. As you can see, I already have one scheduled for 3.45 p.m., but I'm going to pick up another at the Georgetown location. When I find one I like, I simply swipe right on that block. This one looks good, so I'll go ahead and accept it. When it's time to start a block, I'll hit go to start location at the home screen of the app. I can use Amazon Flex navigation for directions to the starting point. I usually like to double check with Google Maps to make sure that the estimated route time is correct. Notice that I have until 3.50 p.m. to arrive started. for a 3.45 p.m. block. Anything North later than 5 minutes late and I will have to forfeit this block. When I get to the distribution center, I'll mark I've arrived in the app. I'll then be prompted to show my driver's license at check-in. Once I do so, I can pull forward in the line and grab a cart with all the packages that I'll need to deliver on this block. I can then scan in each of the packages individually through the app. Usually the cart will come labeled with a sheet that tells you the total number of packages and the different zones that those packages are broken up to. If you get one of these sheets, make sure to double check that you've scanned in the right number of packages. And I also like to organize my packages by zone in my car because these correspond to the different addresses that I drop off on the map and it makes it easier for me to find my packages throughout the route. When I've confirmed that I've finished scanning in all of my packages, I can hit swipe to finish at the bottom. This will pull up a list view of all the stops on your route, and you can also see a map view. The first stop on my route is highlighted in green, and as you can see, it's not the closest to my location. The closest stop is 19, so I'm going to adjust that by clicking on the 19 delivery and adjusting my route to travel to this stop instead. Navigation started. Head north on 4th Avenue South. When I arrive at the delivery location, I'll mark I've arrived. This will pull up some notes about the delivery. In this case, I have an access code because it's an apartment complex. I can then hit I've read all notes, and when I've located the package in my car, I can go ahead and scan that package. I'll make sure to locate the correct QR code or barcode to scan the package in. I have a few different options for where I can leave the package. More often than not, I'll end up leaving it at the front door. But in this case, there's a receptionist, so I'm going to have the receptionist sign for the package. 
This will confirm that the delivery has been made safely and I can go ahead and finish this delivery once it's been signed for. After I swipe to finish, I'll begin my route to the next delivery stop. The app will try to continue to put me on the original sequence of deliveries, so I'm going to make an update to my route once again. Nine times out of 10, I won't have to make any adjustments to my route, but it's good that we go through these steps just in case. As you can see, I currently have two separate deliveries on this route, and it looks like an apartment building, so I'll probably have two separate units within that apartment. Now that I'm here, I'll mark I've arrived. I can see in the notes that I may need a code to enter the building, and it is a locker delivery. I'll remember the locker code of 2015A to open the locker once I'm inside. I've read all the notes, so I'm going to go ahead and mark continue. This will pull up the specific package information so I can locate those packages in my vehicle. But because this is a locker delivery, there are going to be a few extra steps once I've finished scanning in the packages. I'll need to locate the locker in the building. Usually this is included in the notes, but I can also ask the concierge. Once I've located the locker, I'll enter the locker code 2015A and then scan my package in. There are multiple sizes of lockers available, so I'll select the size that best fits with the size of my package. Once I've safely stored my first package in the locker, I can go ahead and repeat this process with the second package. I can then complete the delivery in the app by marking that the packages have been delivered to a secure mailroom. In this case, I'm having some internet connectivity issues, but I'm able to go ahead and finish the delivery without internet connection. At this point, I'm ready to move on to my next delivery, and once again, the app has me routed to a delivery that's a little bit further away than the closest potential delivery. So I'm going to once again make an adjustment to that route inside of the app. This new route looks more reasonable, so I'm going to hit travel to this stop. Once I've arrived at this destination, I'll hit I've arrived. I'll note that there is an access code for this package, and then once I find the package, I'll hit scan package and continue to scan that package in. In this case, I've grabbed the wrong package for a customer that had a similar name. So I'm going to go back and locate the correct package, and then I can go ahead and scan that package into the app. I'll be leaving this package at the front door, so I'll make sure to note that once I've scanned the package in. I can then take a photograph of the package at the front door for evidence that I've dropped it off. I choose this method of delivery and take a photo as often as possible to leave zero room for error and lower my chances of deactivation. This was the last package on my route, so the app will automatically update and acknowledge that I've finished all of my deliveries. I'm not required to return to the station in this case, but I will be prompted to fill out a short survey based on how the deliveries went. In this case, I delivered all of my packages and I did not have to return. Let's go over some quick troubleshooting in the app. In some cases, you will have a business delivery, but the business will be closed by the time you're ready to deliver the packages. In this case, you'll mark unable to deliver, and then you'll select a reason why. I'll select the last reason from the checklist, business closed, and then I have an opportunity to update the hours of operation for the business here. In this case, I'll change the business hours from closing at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. and then hit save and finish. Because I did not deliver these packages, I'll be required to return them to the distribution center at the end of my route. In this last scenario, we'll look at how to contact a customer during a delivery. This is rarely necessary, but occasionally the customer requests it or some of the details on their notes are wrong. We can either text the customer or request to call the customer from inside of the app. It's definitely not an option that I use unless it's entirely necessary. Now let's take a look at a weekly delivery partner summary. Now this is where Amazon grades me on all of my metrics from reliability to delivery quality. As you can see, I forfeited one block within 45 minutes of start time in the past week so I was only on time for two out of three deliveries. And this has hurt my overall reliability rating and dropped it to 85% total. We can assume that most deactivations are based entirely on the above numbers. So it's important to review these reports and make sure that your ratings are high. Let's take a quick look at how to go online and start accepting instant offers. Amazon recently discontinued Amazon restaurants, so the only instant offers available currently would be for Prime Now deliveries. To go online, I simply swipe right to available now in the upper right hand corner of the app. Now occasionally the app will have me photo ID to verify that I am actually Jonathan Whitney and I can easily do so and get started. Now I will just wait for instant deliveries to pop up within the app. That wraps up all of the main features for the Amazon Flex driver app. 
If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button and show me a little bit of love. And make sure you subscribe to the channel for more awesome app reviews.